choices. So many different outcomes, path dependencies, and decisions that can affect you and those around you. One game that fits the mold of choices to a T is Serain, the late 2020 turn-based strategy game developed by Torpure Games and published by Fellow Traveler. In this, you can take control of an individual you shape named Anton Rain and lead the fictional country of Swordland through strife, challenge, and potential destruction. If you are interested in the concept of being a fictional president of a foreign country, click off this video before I partially spoil the game and the various events that can unfold. If not, here we go. To start off, in the year 1954, you are recently elected president of Swordland, following a long dictatorship of Tarquin Sol, the founder of the ruling party of Swordland, the USP. This presidency followed various civil wars between communist and nationalists, foreign intervention, and massive economic challenges. After the 20-year reign of Seoul, from 1929 to 1949, a one-term president who led economic and social reforms through capitalist means, Ewald Alfonso, took power. However, whether due to his own decisions or foreign trade issues, the economy quickly developed into a recession, which forced Alfonso to not seek re-election. You can decide to force him out in the early game introduction before the game really starts. From here, it is up to you. You can decide to follow communist, capitalist, reformist, or soulless way, with all your choices affecting the game around you, and how you want it to play out. The major superpowers in the game are the capitalist Republic of Arcasio, simulating the US, United Cortana, simulating the USSR and the Communist East. Swordland spawns in Eastern Mercopia, a part of the larger Mercopia landmass. Like Europe, this world spawns with several continents to simulate Africa, Asia, etc. But Mercopia is kind of a mix between North America and Europe. It's pretty cool. Many nations around Swordland have a rich history in the game. But a few that appear on the map are Angolia, the capitalist republic and longtime friend of Swordland, the strong navy, Wellen, a poor and struggling divided state under a dictatorship, attempting to weaken Blundus nationalism, a group of people which Wellen and Swordland occupy from earlier kingdoms. Then three stronger states in eastern Mercopia are Lespasia, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, another capitalist state which is in eastern Mercopia, Vlagsland, a naval based communist state in conflict with Angolia over the island of Helgeland, and finally the monarchy of Rumberg, who is your main antagonist in the game, wanting to expand into Sorland, and who, if you play your cards wrong, will invade and destroy your country, and who also possess nuclear weapons. The game has 9 base endings, with 20 sub-endings. The main endings include re-election, assassination, lost election, impeachment, retirement, coup d'etat, defeat in war, and finally nuclear war with Rumberg. All these endings can take place in various ways, such as worldwide nuclear war, if you ally with Cortana, against Rumberg, etc. The main takeaways from this video are Serene is a vastly complicated and unique game that helps a player truly feel in control of a country and one's own actions. It has intense replayability and is well worth the multi-hour experience on the first playthrough. I would highly recommend it. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like it if you want to see more content like this. Subscribe if you are new to the channel and tell me what you thought of the video in the comments down below. I plan on doing more short term video game review videos in the future. I really enjoyed this game, it was just a quick playthrough, and I wanted to make a quick video recommending it because I think everyone should play it. Hope you all have a great new year.